Hello and welcome to To The Turf. I'm Brenna Green. Josh going to be pinch hitting for us as we're still awaiting a new weekend sports anchor. And Josh, I got to say, that open, I watched that open earlier this week. I teared up a little yeah. bit. Because it was like, oh my gosh, we are finally back to normal high school football in the fall. It's back here around the Inland Northwest. Yeah, I was getting pumped watching it too. That's my first time seeing it. Definitely a yeah. weird spring for Washington football, but now they're back on track and so are we. So let's show some football. Yeah, let's do it. Shall we? Okay. Yeah. We're going to start with Central Valley and Wenatchee's Eastmont. This was an instant classic tonight. We were there for another reason, but we're going to get to that in a second. CV turned the ball over three times in the first half of the first quarter. Eastmont will capitalize. Gunnar Peterson gets the Cats on the board for a 7-0 early lead. Then after a botched punt, Wildcats back in business. Ivan Corona takes it to the house. The Stun Bears found themselves trailing 14-0. They bounce back quickly to cut the lead in half. Zach Abshire up the middle from a few yards out. CV would trail the entire game by as much as 19, but they somehow make a game of it. Fast forward to the fourth, 10 seconds left to play. CV down eight, and they get the score that they need. Luke Abshire to Nick Sanders. A two-point conversion would tie it. They give it to Abshire. He's ruled down just shy of the goal line. You be the judge as we take another look. Hard to tell, but it looks like he twists and lands on a tackler before launching himself across the goal line. At any rate, he's ruled down. CV goes down at Eastmont after a great comeback, 33-31. Wow, that's a tough one. Gonzaga yeah. Prep taking on U High Prep, taking on the lead, uh, basically the lead early on with quarterback Ryan McKenna taking off for his first TD. Prep's defense was a wall as well. Look at this, Kaz Melzer with a sack there, followed by Luke Miller with another sack there. New High, though, answers late in the second quarter with an interception only to be stopped. Check out this tap. Yeah, let's see it. Yeah. Stop there, right there it is by bye Nick, bye. See ya. Nick Banky with that beauty, who then delivered, by the way, the last points of the half. There he goes. First half ended 21-0, G prep. The Bullpups took home the win 40 to nothing. Well, since Meade was at home tonight, Mount Spokane had to be on the road. Tonight, they were in Cheney. You can see the student section stoked to be back in the stands. This one was all Wildcats. We're going to take you to the first quarter. Mount Spokane is already up 7-0 from midfield. Kellen Flanagan tosses it to Jordan Sands. Look at him fight for every last inch. Love it. Pushing his way into the end zone. Touchdown, Cats, 14-0. Hey, Mount Spokane, by the way, was dominant. Look at this. Very first place from scrimmage, forcing Cheney after multiple penalties. That's a safety. See that? 16 0 Mount Spokane. We're in the second now. Cheney looking for some momentum. That is not going to do it. Zeke Miller with the in uh, interception that pushing his way through the Cheney offense, stretching out for the pick six. And unfortunately for the Blackhawks, they would fumble on their very next play, leading to this beauty from quarterback Jamin Smith to Reese Shoreman. Should be Reese Sugarman. That's a sweet run for a touchdown. He 30 said nothing. he was going to say it, he did it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. By yes. the way, continue to be all Wildcats. Shut out 55 to nothing. Tonight was also a big night for one high school in our area because first ever football game we're talking about. Yeah, Ridgeline took on Lewis and Clark tonight because they're brand new. It only made sense for us to take our mic'd up segment out there. So here is Redline's, Ridgeline's David Myers for Coach Up. You got the best dressed ball boy there could be. I know, I'm dripping out here. That's a pretty good start. That's a pretty good start. Here we go, here we go, offense. Hey, nothing wrong with that drive to start with, okay? Got a little taste of varsity football. You guys have played approximately 10 minutes of varsity football. You guys have gotten a stop. I know I'm not talking the whole defense here, but you guys have gotten a stop. And you guys made them put a heck of a drive together. Nice job, guys! Nice job, Cole! Good job! Why are you guys quiet? Come on! Make some noise! Let's go! We're gonna pick them up, and when something good happens, we're gonna celebrate them. Yeah, let's go, baby! Woo! There you go, boys! That's what we wanna see! Great job! Hey, hey, hey! Come here, Jaden! Come here, come here, come here! Hey, congratulations on Ridgeline's first ever touchdown, buddy. Lost, but still an awesome game. Starting up at Mead's brand new stadium as they hosted Ferris. It was a low scoring game, 7-3 into the first half. It stayed that way. Ferris taking a knee to end the game. Yeah, 
Seven to three is the final score. I don't really know what else to say. This was a game that didn't have a lot, but that's all right. Let's head to Idaho now, shall we? Sandpoint hosting Coeur d'Alene. CDA's Braden Benston sends it to Gunner Julio. He's going 24 yards to the house. Doesn't matter if he needs to drag a wow. defender with him. <laughs> He's getting it done. 7-0 CDA, 836 in the first. Bingston picks up another passing touchdown in the second quarter. This time it's to Rob Collier, 14-0 Vikings later on in that second quarter. Sandpoint has their ball in the 26-yard line. That's a fumble, folks. Tanner Lagley is seeing straight cash, homie. 74-yard fumble return. That's a touchdown. 21-0 at that point. However, Sandpoint would then only allow three more Vikings points, but it was not enough. Coeur d'Alene hangs on to win 24 to 22. Post Falls made the over 400 mile trip, trip to Rigby, and it was a Trojan versus Trojan war in East Idaho. Rigby takes the lead a couple of minutes into the game. Lucas McCola takes the handoff 14 yards for a touchdown. The top ranked team in 5A was not done scoring in the first quarter. This time Rigby does it through the air. Tiger Adolfo finds Coleman Lords wide open down the sidelines. What a name. Yeah, right? He dives in for the six. McCullough gets the rock again, gets the end zone again. You get the picture. Rigby pours it on in the second half and goes on to win 49 to 14. If your name is Tiger, you better be scoring. Hey, remember we told you we're going to show you why we went out to Wenatchee tonight earlier in the show? We'll tell you why after the break. You're going to want to see this. We promise.